Well, now that I have everything fully dimpled, it's time to start riveting. Uh, interestingly, the plans called for starting by riveting the aft and working her way to the front. I, I would have expected it to go the other way, work from the front to the aft, but I'm sure there's method to their madness, so I'm gonna do just what they say. I'm gonna go through and uh, rivet some of the easy ones and then slowly work myself towards, or my way towards the, to the fore here. Um, probably only two of the rivets on each of the ribs on either side am I gonna be able to do with the squeeze and the rest of them are all gonna be done with bucking bars. So, yay, that'll be fun. But uh, here we go, about to start riveting. I got to use the squeezer a lot on this particular area and it worked out really well and I thought I'd uh, give you a little bit of a close-up to show you exactly what it looks like. And before anyone says anything uh, like that that rivet is too short or it just doesn't, it doesn't look correct, I actually used the little tool and it is actually correct. But yeah, my first impression was, hmm, that didn't stick out far enough, but yeah, it totally does. So here's a little bit more of a QA that uh, I did while out there working and I thought I'd let myself from the past just ramble for a bit. So another question I have received um, is whether or not going to the, you know, moving my uh, build from my house to the hangar has affected the amount of time I get to work on it and has it pushed the delivery date or, or, or completion date out? It's a very good question. Um, so has it affected the amount of time I put into playing? Yes. In some ways negatively, in some ways positively. Um, so previously I would go, you know, at the end of the day, I'd go out to my garage and I'd putter for 30 or 40 minutes and then I was done. Uh, that's, I mean, the hangar is 20 minutes away from my house, unfortunately. It's funny, it's, it, you can, if I just step over a hill, I can almost see the hangar from where I live because I'm up on top of the mountain, but I'm on the wrong side of the mountain. And so I have to like drive down the mountain, around the mountain, through the town, and then, then I get to the hangar. It's, it's, uh, it's a little inconvenient. Uh, I wish I wish there were a more convenient road, but there isn't. So that has added a certain amount of time to the process. Weirdly, it has not changed my finish date overly much. Primarily because previously I'd go out and every night I'd work an hour or 30 minutes or whatever. Now what ends up happening is I sometimes go out during the week and I'll work for 30 or 40 minutes but what ends up happening a lot more often is I'll go on the weekend and I'll be, be out here for eight or nine hours, you know, and so previously I, I wouldn't do that. So it's just kind of changed when I work. Uh, as to has it affected my end date, you know, it's hard for me to say because my end date was kind of a rough guess anyways. Uh, I've always said that, I, you know, my goal is to try to finish this plane before 2020. And as far as I know, I'm still on track to do that. But I mean, my, just based on the numbers, uh, you know, it was a wild guess, you know? So I, I don't know if I'm gonna, if I'm still on track to beat that or not. I hope so. Uh, all I can do is keep trying and uh, you know, I'm gonna either make it or don't make it and go from there. Hope that answers your question. Thanks. Well, there you have it. I went through and I added rivets. Uh, the instructions say do the top two and then proceed down each of the ribs. Uh, I was actually able to get the squeezer uh, to the top three because I had this really long yoke. Um, I will tell you that having this longer yoke is really helpful and handy. Uh, the way it works is you, you don't have a top like many of the other yokes have a hole in the top and you would have two uh, of these little dies instead. This one just goes up to this top of this bar, up to the top of this bar here, because there is no top yoke. And that means you can get slightly longer throw. Uh, this is a four incher and I've seen a six incher. I can't, I, I can't recommend getting the six. The four is pretty useful and I, I've used it quite a bit just for some of these longer throws. One thing I would be 
very cognizant of when you're using it is if you get it slightly off centered, you can fold the rivet over slightly. So that is just something to think about. And it's really easy to do with the longer the, like the longer the yoke, the easier that is to do. But um, thankfully I had none of that here. Uh, I got all of the, like I said, the top three across here done and all of them down on this particular end because I have mm. access to it on this end, that end I don't. So for my next trick, I'm gonna get out the bucking bar and the rivet gun and get to work. And for the last part of this, I'm gonna go through and start adding rivets uh, and putting a little bit of uh, that blue painter's tape over that. And, uh, you know, do the deed. Uh, I did have someone tell me that it looks like uh, I'm dipping uh, during this, where you see me pick up the red uh, Solo cup there and spit, and I'm not, I actually, I I'm chewing sunflower seeds. Uh, which may be just as nasty of a habit, I'm not sure, because, you know, you gotta, you gotta spit out the shells, and I don't really want to spit on my floor. But, uh, yeah, so uh, this, is, uh, this is a thing. Uh, you can see I'm going every other rivet, and you can see I'm match drilling a little bit there, and it's because after all said and done, every once in a while, the, uh, the, the rib and the skin still don't quite want to allow me to put the, rib, uh, the rivet in. And even though I don't have to clean that hole up, I go ahead and do so before I put the uh, rivet in. It, it makes no difference. Nine times out of ten, it just it goes through completely perfectly. Um, I'm doing the bottom here, and then uh, in the next video, I'll flip it around and do the top. Um, the bottom is uh, kind of flat until you get towards the very nose, and the other side is not flat at all. <laughs> so, uh, you know, that's fun. It, it's, it's, uh, it's, it gets a little awkward. Uh, as you see, when, when I'm standing up on that stool and I'm kind of reaching deep down in there and using the, the, the gun to, to, you know, seat the rivets, it gets a little awkward. Just don't rush and make sure that you have the rivet or the, sorry, make sure you have the bucking bar square against the rib inside because if you have it canted left or right, up or down, yeah, you'll leave a dent, and we want to try to avoid those. So anyways, that was everything. I really appreciate uh, you guys watching. I know this video was a little bit short. I got another one here coming very soon. See ya.